something How about to look use at. this as a mic? Yeah, yeah, use yours. It's a hook, visual you hook. You would be like, why, why are they holding those when we literally see their mics? <laughs> <laughs> so, hi Josh, thank you so much for coming on. <laughs> why yeah. are you Thanks for having me. All right guys, so I have Josh Matikor here for today's interview and we'll be asking him a few questions about his cybersecurity career. So first question, could you tell us a little bit more about how no. Could you tell us a bit more? No. Could you tell us a bit about how you got into cybersecurity and what you've done in your career? Yeah. So originally, uh, I worked in IT. I worked in help desk first. Um, I was going to community college, and I just saw people, the help desk people, helping other people. And by the way, if we cut like all of this out, because I'm I'm gonna yap like no, too right, much. Right, so it's fine. It's like, fine. Got it. So I saw other people working in help desk and I just applied and I eventually got hired to work in IT. And I worked in IT for like a few years. Uh, eventually I moved to Hawaii and I was working at a bank. And then uh, I just saw an opening for a cybersecurity position and I was already practicing different cybersecurity labs at that point. And I had gotten my security plus and I applied to it and they interviewed me and I talked about the labs that I was practicing and I just ended up getting hired. So that's kind of my first cybersecurity job. And then for that job, uh, I had to set up a SOC or like a security operations center, like the bank was setting up a SOC. So I, I kind of got in charge of that. Um, I had to set up the SIM, which is security information event management system, as well as their data loss prevention system, that is DLP. So if somebody sends a lot of information outside of the bank, like a bunch of social security numbers, we would like flag it and investigate it, um, as well as like the web traffic and, and filtering system that would like prevent people from going to malicious sites or like, you know, adult sites, that type nice. of thing. So that's what I did for that job. So offhand comment, I'm gonna delete this, but yeah. when I worked at I was like gonna join the forensics team and they told me that employee would stream or <laughs> go on some kind of site have to report them to just, the police. Just like a different person every couple. Yeah, it happens way more often than you think. That's crazy. On their work machine. Bro, Isn't that crazy? they have to be dumb to be able Yeah, to do, do they that. not know? Maybe it's because they don't want it on their personal computer and they somehow think. You better use <laughs> one. <laughs> you better use my work laptop, bro. So what do you think made the biggest difference getting into cybersecurity? Was it your certs? Was it your past experience? Um, it's probably a combination of all of those things. Um, definitely, like, you can't just get a cert and then get a job. Right. Um, and experience helps too, so it's definitely a combination, but I think the, well, it's hard to say. I think those, like, credentials and stuff will get you the interview, but once you're actually in the interview, it helps to have done some kind of project or something that you can talk about, that you can tell them to kind of convey passion or convey that you care about the job rather than just like doing certs. So it is for sure like a combination of a bunch of different things. What was the worst job you had in cybersecurity? Uh, the worst job I had in cybersecurity, I was working for a local government in Seattle. And basically like local government, they get their budget like basically they're guaranteed to keep functioning even if they don't work properly, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're not, they're not incentivized to be efficient. So because of that, uh, all the employees like don't really want to work properly. And in cybersecurity, you have to do, well, depending on where you work, you have to do a lot of behavior modification, like getting people to do certain things. Uh, getting them to not do certain things, getting people to like help you when you're trying to do like vulnerability management or something. And that job was really stressful because people like didn't want to work and it just made my job really hard. Like I'd put forth a lot of effort and then no results would happen because like they didn't have to work, they didn't have to collaborate, they won't get fired, right? Because it's the local government. And you'll you'll see this sentiment a lot uh, in tech and local government. So I didn't I didn't like that job just because of that. But. Damn. Yeah, I, I feel like I see that a lot in cybersecurity where like your job is not just your job, but it's also like making sure other people are doing what they're supposed to do, which adds like extra stress because you're not really a manager per se, but you kind of yes. have to manage certain people's behavior. Yes, like as a as a program manager and you have to like control people through rapport and like Yeah, yeah, it's being nice. People politics what is it? Yeah, like corporate politics, basically. Yeah. Do you think that cybersecurity is still a good career to go into nowadays? Uh, it's definitely a good career. Um, like anything in tech, and I guess the rest of the world, it's gonna like keep evolving and changing and changing over time. Um, that's just the nature of it, because the you know the bad guys will figure out something new, and then we have to like patch it. 
and then we can like automate that part and then they'll figure out something new and then we have to manually like patch it and then we can automate it and then that it's just like a, an ever going cycle forever mm -hmm. um, like AI will come out and well it did come out and it's gonna yeah. advance and then attacks are gonna be born from that and then we're gonna develop defenses for that and it's just gonna keep going forever so you obviously you can't go into it expecting it to stay the same you kind of have to like navigate the landscape and brush up your skills but it's for sure going to be uh, useful and it's going to be a good career well good career is like relative but there will certainly be jobs for it in the future anyway. mm. okay so you don't think ai is going to take over all the cybersecurity jobs um it for sure will take over a lot of cybersecurity jobs but like a lot new jobs will be born i guess I if that makes sense yeah. so if someone is in college right now or maybe they're going through a boot camp and they're trying to get into cybersecurity, what do you think they should do like on top of what they're already doing because the current curriculum you know most things aren't changing as fast as they should be i don't think especially like for beginner learning resources mm. so what do you think can make them a better job candidate definitely doing stuff doing something that puts the curriculum in theory into practice um, like building something cybersecurity related because um, if you don't work for a company you can always kind of like quote unquote make your own experience right, your own. something yeah. like this like buy our products no just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like build some kind of platform or something on Azure like build a sock I seen that you are recommending people sometimes to like build a oh, home yeah, sock yeah, yeah. or something that's better than not doing anything at all it's like quite good actually and a lot of people, a lot of my audience has done that. They'll like build a sock and then build out like an incident response plan and do like some kind of a tabletop incident response scenario and then put it all out on like a portfolio on GitHub or something like this. And then they'll practice that a few times. And the more you practice it, the easier it is to articulate once you get into an interview. And it's just going to help you a lot more than like the person next to you who maybe they just graduated and they didn't really do anything with their theory, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Because I feel like I've done a lot of resume reviews where people are like applying to hundreds of jobs and they're like but I'm not hearing anything back and I look at the resume and it's usually like they have their security plus and then maybe like a random like online course or cert mm. and they don't have any projects it's really just I think that's the biggest issue because even if you have the certs if you don't have the experience to showcase like your technical capabilities then a recruiter isn't gonna send you to the hiring manager because they're gonna think you won't be able to pass the interview mm. but I don't think a lot of people think from the recruiter's perspective as much as they should when they're in the job hunting process yeah yes I agree I agree with this for sure it's really important <laughs> <laughs> no, <what? laughs> All right, so I guess last question we could do. Would you say working in cybersecurity, have you liked your jobs? Do you like what you currently do? And do you recommend it to other people? Um, I like some of my jobs. Um, the job that I liked the most was not in local government and it had a decent amount of coding involved. But I, I think uh, for, for the most part, I think I like my jobs. Uh, I prefer like what I'm doing now more than uh, working corporate jobs. That's that is doing like cybersecurity, like YouTube and creating cybersecurity products and stuff like this for people to practice. I find that more fun because I can like really control what I'm doing and I just have like full control of everything, I guess. I don't get roadblocked by random people, but um, I would recommend cybersecurity. Um, you just probably have to have more patience than you think because uh, it's yeah. a lot of dealing with people and interpersonal stuff it's probably to be honest it's more it's more than half like soft skills i think and like um dealing i would actually agree with that yeah you need like some technical ability but like too much paperwork and like a lot of rapport building and interpersonal communication like probably more than you expect but uh it's it's a decent career because you can make a decent amount of money and you get a lot of practice doing different cool stuff and meeting cool people and like i, I met sandra eventually right because i was doing cybersecurity, so i, I would recommend it it's a very really good nice. career nice yes thank you yes i agree i do think that cybersecurity and tech in general just has like good community behind it even in like the creator space i guess but could you tell us more about what you do now like with youtube and like like what does your day-to-day -day look like yeah so oh god i don't know the best way to like to answer this so uh, basically like i'm a youtuber obviously if you didn't already know and like kind of the, the meta for youtube can i be like really candid about like the yeah, business yeah. like component so like the meta for youtube is you get an audience of people who like you and then you like sell them a product um but there's like a kind of a 
a slider that you can use for like how much ethics you want to have. So if you have a lot of ethics, you want to make sure that the product you sell to your audience is like actually like a really good product and not some yeah. like great. So for me, I try to make like really good products. For me, I try to anyway. So like my my previous one that I made is like a. Um, you go through and like build a, a sock in like a honey net essentially in Azure and it gets attacked from like, adversaries and like bots on the internet and then you like work to like uh, apply controls and like secure your environment essentially and practice incident response and then the I'm making a new product now which is like um, a, a cyber range so everyone's going to use like the same like shared environment and there's like a enterprise tenable for vulnerability management and then um, defender for endpoint for EDR and we practice threat hunting and like all this stuff and everyone has a shared environment. So that's the next product. So I pretty much work on that all day like to, to talk about it in like a really business standpoint like all those like YouTube videos and stuff that's basically like marketing right it's a content marketing but again the, the ethical slider you can make brain dead content if you don't have any ethics or you can try to make a good content if you have ethics so I try to make good content but it takes a lot of effort so I pretty much just work on like YouTube videos and then product and then uh, community outreach and then YouTube video product community outreach and I just keep doing that community outreach is just like responding to YouTube comments and stuff so I just kind of do that in a cycle like forever uh, essentially but I'm, I'm really bad at social media compared to, to you. No. I, I would, I agree. No, no I disagree. <laughs> I agree. You should leave that in. <laughs> I agree. Look at all the brain fart. No, 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 I disagree. <laughs> Wait, I disagreed with my part. <laughs> Which one is that? No, you're so good at social media, that's why. No, no. I, I think, um, for YouTube, I still find myself where I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm just like, oh man, I thought that video would do well, but it did not do well. <laughs> Stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think social media is a skill that constantly needs to be trained. Yeah, it takes a lot of energy. And I noticed like um, watching you and like trying to do stuff on my own, like growing YouTube is not the same as growing Instagram, which is oh, yeah. not the same as growing LinkedIn, which is not the same as TikTok. And it's just like a lot of a decent amount of effort, right, to like do each one of those. Yeah, that's why I stopped doing TikTok, or I like tried to do it for a bit, and I was like, all right, I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> all right, get me out of here. So I, I only do Instagram, LinkedIn, and YouTube now. But LinkedIn is so different. You're right. Damn, all the bro. tech creators that I've been, all the tech creators I've been meeting, like the younger ones. So I guess that is the end of this interview. Do you have anything else you want to share and advice for the audience? Um, just like, if you want to get into cybersecurity, just if you do something, it's like better than doing nothing. And this sounds weird to say, like the more you do, you, the more you're going to be able to do. Mm -hmm. um, so just like watch Sandra's content and my content. There's a, like a lot of roadmaps between the both of us and like a lot of other good creators as well. And we pretty much, most of the, for the most part, we're kind of saying the same thing, you know, in terms of like roadmap and stuff yeah. to do to kind of get you, get you that job. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna yap yeah, too much. But yeah, just um, like don't give up and eventually you'll be able to get something. And when you start applying to jobs, just apply to both like IT and cybersecurity jobs and just make sure everything is squared away. And like eventually like you'll get something. But yeah, just follow us and uh, yeah. Thanks for watching. All right. All right, thanks Josh for the interview. You guys can find Josh's links and handles in the description box. In the description box below. <laughs> Why did I say that? In <laughs> <laughs> test, test, test. Start talking. Bing bong. And the audio, okay. Honestly, I didn't double check. You can but just... I'm really gonna hope that it is. Wait, I can see it, right? Test, uh, test, test. Okay. Wait, where should I look? Which one? That's or should that's I not a even really look? That's a good question. No, 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 look here. Look this here. one? Yeah. Okay. All right, let me think. All right, what do you want to be asked, actually? What do I, I want to be asked? Um, I've been asked. Those are porcupines. That's so cute. Where's that hedgehog? Yeah. I think it, it is a... It's really important. No, <laughs> 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 what? I, I think that was good. Okay. That first one was good. No, I think... I think. <laughs> this is a great interview.